everyone. Thank you for joining our youth panel session today. My name is Amelia Chicas, pronoun she, her, hers, and I will be facilitating the Q&A session, session later on. Uh, we have a wonderful presentation curated by the Youth Advisory Council Planning Committee, aka the Yak Pack. So without further ado, I am excited to hand it off to the Youth Advisory Council. Hi, I'm Ambrose, a former intern with Solar One GDL, and my pronouns are they, he. Hi, my name is Sarah. My pronouns are she, her, and I was an intern with Solar One as a peer, peer advisor um, and mentor for the youth interns last summer. And hi, my name is Isabel Vina. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm Solar One's education program associate. All right, so I just want to give a little context to what we'll be talking about today. Um, we represent the Youth Advisory Council Planning Committee, um, which is housed under Solar One, the organization that I work for. Solar One is a nonprofit um, who focuses on sustainability, climate change, energy. We do a lot of um, renewable energy advocacy here in New York City. Um, and here you can see the departments that operate within Solar One. I represent the Green Design Lab, which is our K through 12 education and professional development department. Um, we also do uh, hands-on training for green jobs. We facilitate a space um, on the East River, Stuyvesant Cove Park. We also work on getting um, affordable access to solar energy in New York City through a variety of different programming. And we work with the mayor's office and other um, policy agencies to advocate for clean energy policy. Um, so that's a little bit about Solar One, and the Youth Advisory Council is operated within that. So the idea for this Youth Advisory Council um, kind of came about when I was brainstorming with several different people, including Ambrose and Sarah, around how we can incorporate more youth leadership within the organization of Solar One. Um, we want to make sure our education programming is youth centered and I feel like we can't center programming around youth if youth aren't involved in the planning um, stages of that work. So we also, in addition to um, incorporating youth leadership for the benefit of Solar One's programming, we also know that there um, it's valuable to have more opportunities for youth to be incorporated in leadership positions to improve their job skills and um, they can build their resume out, they can prepare for college, things like that. So collaborating meaningfully in a horizontal way with adult staff within a nonprofit is a good experience for everyone involved really. Um, and we also wanted to make sure this space was comfortable for the youth we bring on um, we wanted to make sure it was really designed to actually benefit the members of the council. So we decided to form a planning committee, which would plan the actual youth advisory council. So the planning committee is also made up of, of youth organizers and leadership. Okay, just to run everyone through the timeline really quick. So we had a sort of pre-plan to the actual planning committee as well. Um, so a couple days before we designed the Yak Pack retreat, um, which included getting to know each other, icebreakers, um, speaking more on our skills, um, brainstorming questions. We did team building, getting to know each other, right? And then we scheduled a meeting with Erica from Mentor New York. And we had a couple meetings with her, but the first meeting was really important, a really big step for us. We created our community agreements, which actually started with our first meeting with Erica. And then after that, we did a little bit more research, including resources that were given to us by Mentor New York and Erica. Um, we interviewed a couple people, including our CEO, 
um, members of Solar One GDL, uh, and sorry, sorry. Um, we created the framework, which included our research, and it was a baseline that we wanted the Youth Advisory Council to adapt um, to their liking. And after that, we drafted job postings and interview questions for when the moment came to actually start the Youth, Youth Advisory Council and find potential candidates. And the last step would be seeking funding, which is what we're currently doing and hoping to start uh, in fall or winter. Okay, so back to what I said about our retreat. Um, so most of us went through SYEP and with SYEP, we learned more about our skills in hats and ladders and the things that we were best at. And then we continued to talk about it during our retreat and what we thought we could contribute the most to the planning committee. After that, we did initial brainstorming questions. We had research questions and reflection questions. Now this, in addition to meeting with Erica, was to help us figure out where we wanted to start with that research um, and what direction we're going in, which in the end really helped us with our framework as well. So during this internship, uh, at the same time, we Isabel and I were also designing a workshop for climate generation um, and a workshop for climate change education, incorporating civic engagement into youth leadership. So some of the research and um, things we presented on that during that workshop were reflected in kind of how we worked as a team over at the Yak Pack and how we wanted youth to get engaged in the Yak. Um, so the two points I want to highlight the most that we worked on from that workshop and brought into our work with the Yak Pack was professional skill development through youth leadership, which Isabel previously talked about. And also I kind of pulled together my experience as case studies for this workshop and utilized the lessons learned to kind of create these four phases, um, which I'll get into later, but four phases of how a, an adult advisor or teacher could guide youth into youth-led projects without necessarily pre-prescribing or dictating what they would be doing um, beforehand, so really emphasizing creativity and youth-driven initiatives. Um, and yeah. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, we wanted this to be an opportunity for students to grow as well, um, make sure it's a reciprocal mutually beneficial experience. Um, so some of the skills that we kind of build on in the Youth Advisory Council include agenda setting, group facilitation. So instead of me, the adult facilitator, facilitating every single meeting we have, we set up a rolling facilitation system where everyone gets a chance to lead the space and um, take uh, a, a turn setting the agenda and speaking to the group and moving us through the agenda and timekeeping and all of that, which is really important, obviously, for any work experience um, in the future. So another skill we worked on is public speaking. We had a culminating presentation to the Solar One staff at the end of the six weeks we worked together this over the summer. Um, so that was a really good experience for people to practice speaking about their work. And it was definitely nerve wracking, but I think it went really well and we got very positive feedback. So we also built on our communication skills, collaborative decision making. Um, how do we come to decisions together as a group? That's a big question. I think we'll always be brainstorming ways to come to decisions together. Um, we built out our critical thinking skills, problem solving skills. We did a lot of research and writing. So kind of improving that, especially um, 
two of the YACPAC members who aren't here today were finishing their senior year of high school going into college. So I think the research and writing skills it was really helpful to support them in entering their freshman year of college. Um, we also did action planning and project organizing. So like, how do you start a project without a teacher assigning you the project with specific parameters? Like you actually have to come up with the parameters and then oversee the implementation of the project itself, which is a whole skill set. Um, and then also professional email writing. I think that gets overlooked sometimes when we talk about job skills, but emails are really important. Um, so I like to highlight email writing in the work I do with youth. Yeah, to build on that. So now taking in the skills that Isabel talked about and bringing it to focus on these four phases, um, team building, student exploration, organized planning, engagement, doesn't necessarily have to be done in that order, but these are kind of the four pillars of what should be emphasized during a youth-led experience and organization. Uh, team building to kind of create this community and safe space for students to collaborate. Um, and this can be done through, like we'll get into later, um, setting a community guideline. How do we work together? Which Isabel emphasized, what are we interested to do together? Like what are our goals, collective goals? Um, and how do we act uh, and participate in working together? Uh, second is organized planning, which we kind of did in the YACPAC with designing the framework and creating these timelines on work schedules and figuring out the research we want to do, what type of questions we want to answer, how that how answering those questions could be applied to the YAC and establishing the systems there. Um, organized planning can be taken in many directions outside of the YAC. So um, I really recommend that you maybe take a screenshot of this. And if you'd like to apply this to your group at school or um, whatever organization you're a part of. And uh, student exploration, creating these open-ended projects um, and prompts to kind of allow students to be creative, but also experiment. So emphasizing trial and error, not that your first go at something might not be the first, the way to go. And it's the learning from this process that is what should be emphasized through your experience together. Um, I think that's a really important value for young people to begin um, using in their work. And then engagement, how are we serving the community? How are we getting people involved? How are we promoting? Social media is a huge thing that a lot of organizations use. So utilizing and implementing these tools that we have today to further our um, goals as a collective. These are kind of four things that we used in our work um, and research with, um, in the YAC pack. And we hope that the YAC would use to fulfill whatever ambitions they come up with um, themselves. So previously talked about community agreements, how we worked, how we communicate. For example, we were doing an internship and uh, we had a cert set work schedule. We kind of made it um, kind of an agreement to respond to each other promptly within 48 hours, within uh, the work set days, so not, not on a weekend, but on times that we are working. Um, another thing, decision-making and conflict resolution, which Isabel talked about earlier, but a problem we had um, in our uh, project specifically was that we agreed on, we kind of disagreed to agree a lot, um, not very assertive. So it was kind of difficult because everyone just wanted to make sure that all our voices were heard and such. And um, we wanted to get one distinct way of doing something or decision made. And so kind of implementing different types of ways of doing this, um, um, which includes having an open discussion or voting or just implement these different ways to kind of make prompt, but also well-informed decisions as a group. And then the last thing was tolerance, um, tolerance and promoting inclusivity in our work, being aware of our community and kind of how our efforts or some of the things we're programming 
would could affect the community um, and kind of creating this opening open and safe space for everyone to share what they want out of it. That was um, another thing we included into our community agreements as well. Um, also, just, just one last thing. Um, one of the most notable community agreements that we have, in my opinion, is that it's okay if you're not okay and you can't put yourself 100% today. Um, everyone is going through something in their lives. And if we can come together as a community youth organization, a group, um, we can support each other and listen and make sure that all our needs are met through the group and we can do the work that we can. But it's okay if we're not 100% that day. Uh, things can happen. We're just there to kind of support each other through our work together. Um, so it's not just all work, 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 or be productive. We want to kind of make this a very immersive, inclusive, and growing type of opportunity for everyone. And building off of what Sarah said, despite the fact that we want to get things done and we want to move forward, it's important that everyone works to their individual level. For example, it might be easier for one person to complete twice the amount of work that you can complete. And it's important not to push yourself too hard because that leads to burnout in the workplace and it can even lead to resentment and a lot of added stress. So one thing that we wanted to do was regular check-ins. So we wanted to increase uh, the communication between everyone on the team. We wanted to increase team support as well. So we're trying to prevent, you know, mm -hmm overworking and we're trying to increase communication to emphasize wellness in the workplace. Like we are here for each other, you know, we are here to make sure that everyone's okay and get work, get work done as a team because success is a group effort. Yeah. Okay. Thank you both for that. I, I think that wellness and work-life balance is one of the most important things we can teach young people in some of their early stages in their career because these lessons they'll be applying to every single job so that is a really important um, thing to take away I hope from this presentation but um, so the youth advisory council planning committee developed a recommendations framework which is about like a 16 page document and the purpose of that document was to act as essentially an instruction manual for whoever takes this project and actually launches the Youth Advisory Council. So um, I will be launching the Youth Advisory Council with my team at Solar One once we get funding to pay hourly wages or stipend for the Youth Advisory Council members. Um, and once we're ready to do that, this document, this framework that they created has like step-by-step -step instruction. So we can make sure the uh, Youth Advisory Council is shaped by youth voice and youth leadership. Um, so some of the recommendations, the general conclusions that were presented in the recommendations framework um, are listed here. So emphasize the voices of youth and encourage youth to take up space. We want to make sure this experience is comfortable for youth members. We want to make sure youth are feeling respected and, um, you know, given positions of leadership within Solar One. We, Solar One is a, an adult-led organization, but this opportunity is specifically for youth to come in and collaborate as equals with our adult staff. So we want to make sure um, these young people in the committee feel respected in that way. Um, we also want to make sure we're handing over some important leadership and professional skills so like we went over earlier. These skills are essential um, and hopefully this opportunity can provide a safe space for people to build skills. Um, we definitely want to make sure our youth programs at Solar One are engaging youth, so that's a big goal of ours. Um, 
We also want to make sure our programs educate people about climate change, climate education, and supporting youth in plugging into the climate movement. We are not reinventing the wheel here with this Youth Advisory Council. There are many existing youth groups within the climate space, uh, many in New York, many across the country and around the world. So this is not brand new, but it is essential for Solar One to be participating in this way. So how can we kind of incorporate with in, into what already exists in this space um, while building up this mission of climate justice education? Um, so we also kind of want to offer hands-on experiences and workshops. We want to make sure we're promoting initiatives that already exist within Solar One, as well as giving Youth Advisory Council members an opportunity to design new programs. Um, we want to make sure people feel supported in the space, of course. We also want to specifically name um, that the way system of oppression, systems of oppression affect marginalized groups um, is not something we're immune to. We all exist within these systems. So it's, it's essential that our group acknowledges um, the ways in which people are affected um, unfairly by these systems and also through that lens, we want to make sure whatever projects we design and implement are thoughtful, justice-centered, community-minded, um, and spark authentic engagement with local community in New York City. So just making sure we incorporate this perspective into everything we do um, to ensure the stuff, the projects we design and implement actually serve the communities we work in. Um, and this would happen both in person and virtually. So going back to when I was speaking about our timeline. So in the beginning, especially before we met with Erica from Mentor New York, I felt a bit uncertain about our direction. That was one of the main things and uncertain about my role. So I think that talking about our skills and um, our, like the things that we were best at really helped. Um, it helped me realize that like things like research um, and organizing my research and my thoughts were things that I was good at and that I can contribute to the team. Um, and then meeting with Erica helped further because using her resources just helped me understand a little bit better uh, what we were doing and why we were there and what our end goal should be. Yeah, and with the last bullet point, again, the biggest theme for me was our direction and all of those things helped me with that, figuring out where we were going. Yeah, um, this was a very unique experience for me because I, it was my first time serving as a mentor for uh, youth, so my peers. But um, so not necessarily being a part of the team um, to create things, but more as a supporter and um, being there for the interns whenever they needed uh, to take things out of their workload, and I, I'd be there to help give some advice on things or, or just help make sure that everyone um, has what they need. And this, what the most valuable lesson for me was that not everyone um, would ask for help when they need it. And so for me, playing this supervising type of role, it was important that I reached out and provided the resources um, or even just uh, ear to listen to what's going on for the interns um, so that we can all kind of return to to work together in just more of a community but also more of a supporting and safe space together and make sure that we can be um, well rested and well coming back into this uh, space and additionally like because I was I was mainly playing this um, mentor role because I previously had experience in youth climate leadership, and 
coming to this, I did not want to over dominate any conversation. So it was more such that um, guiding the interns into and supporting the interns into what they see fit and um, only providing advice or and antidotes about my previous experience when that was needed. Um, just so to really uh, hone in on their creativity and leadership skills. Um, also, I did a lot of time, at, uh, kind of practice a lot of time management and got really, um, got to really understand what works for me and what doesn't in terms of time management. Because on top of this internship, I was also working with two other organizations at the time. So juggling these three different things and um, with multiple projects happening, really staying on top of deadlines, this proved to be a really useful skill, uh, especially scheduling uh, meetings and such, coming into my sophomore year of college, implementing all these different techniques that I figured out worked for me through this internship. That was very important for me. And finally, exploring the creativity of programming by designing team building activities. I thought that um, it was really fun to create kind of this team building aspect because for one of the agreements we came to for the framework for the YAC was that we would have two, two type of um, work spaces. One would be online and people can work to work um, what would fit their schedule best. And then we would also have weekly or bi-weekly or monthly check-ins in person at the office. So really kind of making the experience more human and less zoomed out is this, the phrase for it. Um, more of a personalized experience and kind of creating relationships within um, working together. So yeah, thank you. All right, um, I can stop my. Wow, that was a wonderful presentation from the Yak Pack. We will now be heading into the Q&A portion of our session. Um, beginning with the first question, kind of directed towards Sarah. Um, since this was your first time kind of like on the mentor side of the process, and this organization definitely put an emphasis on you being youth-centered, how did you guys initially engage the young people effectively? Yeah, we started with a lot of questions. Um, for example, what would youth be interested in? What are youth already engaged in? What are problems that youth see are prevalent in their communities and want to tackle? So these are a lot of questions that we propose. And I will say after all the research and working together, we still have those questions. Like those are still standing questions because we want the YAC, um, we plan for the YAC, but we want those students to kind of, um, those youth to kind of be the leaders of that. So I think that um, kind of, there's a huge emphasis on listening and um, hearing what our community needs. Um, on one end of one end of the things, like the professional aspect, we think that just providing uh, professional development is a really important part. Um, especially like if, like for example, with my experience as a first generation immigrant student, um, having having this as a resource available to me, um, having kind of access to knowing what the workforce would want from me um, in the future, uh, just really building your resume and experience. Those are kind of ways in which we want this to benefit you in as many ways as possible. So that's where our starting point kind of um, is. In terms of like a starting point, I know that there was like an initial retreat. So um, Ambrose, could you speak a bit more about like what this retreat uh, entailed and how you guys were set on the onset objectives? Right, so even before the retreat and the planning 
for the tree, I was an intern for um, Solar One. And I spoke with Karen, I believe Isabel also about um, wanting to bring in more youth perspective and include youth more in Solar One GBL. So that's where the idea for the Youth Advisory Council started actually. And then um, both, not both, three of us, Isabel, me and Sarah had some pre-planning where we, like Sarah said, right, to build on what she said, um, we're thinking about different questions to ask. Um, and I feel like I keep, I keep emphasizing um, our direction, but I'm so sorry, one moment. But yeah, um, I keep emphasizing direction, but again, like the pre-planning was to make sure that we had a direction, a focus, um, uh, and we brainstormed our questions, like our brainstorm questions, our research questions, just so that we knew like we had an initial plan and we weren't gonna be all over the place on the first day or in the first week, you yeah. know? I think uh, the initial process is definitely a very important thing because it sets the tone for the rest of kind of the experience. So that leads me to my next question. And this is like directed at the three of you. Um, what was the balance between decision making and vision for the work between the facilitator and the young people? Um, I can jump in and then pass it off to Sarah. Um, so as the adult facilitator in the space um, representing Solar One, I think the biggest lesson for me was like, how can I create enough structure for this project to have a clear direction for the members of this planning committee without making it feel prescriptive or like too assigned, you know, like we don't want it to feel like the, the work has already been done in deciding what we're doing and coming up with a direction. That is the role of the planning committee. Um, but like Ambrose is saying, it can be really intimidating coming into a space where absolutely nothing has been <laughs> created or decided and you have to start from complete scratch. So um, yeah, as like the adult facilitator, and then also as a collaborator with Ambrose and Sarah, we, we wanted to come up with a little bit of structure before the rest of the members joined. Yeah, that's definitely really important in my previous experiences. Um, a, a lot of them were just starting from just just starting. And so we had nothing to work with. And the intention of the adult advisor in the room, whether it's a teacher or um a representative for an, from an, an adult representative from, from an organization it's well intentioned to in, to allow youth to like come up with their own thing and build off of that but at some point it kind of just gets we don't know where we're going you know it's just kind of um too open-ended per se and so we wanted to emphasize that you know the adults at solar one um the experienced professionals they are resources and the supervising the room resources that are there to support um, these efforts. And it's not to say that you can't do something. And I feel like in a lot of these spaces, um, we're just letting the youth do what they want in terms of project planning, et cetera. But um, the guidance is kind of lacking, uh, kind of not knowing. So really, setting these boundaries of uh, what roles we have. Um, it's really important. And in, in a lot of these spaces, we work horizontal or kind of equal. Um, in some, in when I was in high school, like I knew that for some of the organizations I was part of meetings, they were teachers. And um, in school, we call them miss or mister. And in this organization, we're referring to each other by name and we're working together as a part of a team, regardless of our age or educational background. And I think that's one of the most like valuable community aspects to it. So bringing that into um, kind of emphasizing that we all have a collective goal and more, we all want the youth to grow 
And so the advisor would play as a resource, as someone to kind of ask thought provoking questions and move things forward um, in many ways, yeah. So trying to work horizontally, there was a little bit of, um, you know, wanting it to be youth led, wanting more emphasis on youth voice, but then also, you know, not exactly knowing how much to do or how little to do, because there was definitely a fear of if we do too little, then, you know, there might not be enough structure or we might not fully understand where we're going. Um, or the fear of if we do too much, then what is everyone really learning if it, you know, we're doing a lot of the work for them. Um, so again, it was a learning experience for everybody, but at the end of the day, we really wanted it to be a horizontal um, workspace where everyone felt like they had an equal enough part in what was happening, um, that there was a balance, that there wasn't one person that was telling everyone what to do or doing all of the work for everybody. Yeah, I think I'll also jump in. Um, it's kind of, it, as I'm thinking about it and hearing it described by Amber and Sarah, it's sort of a meta planning group because Ambrose, Sarah, and I met before we assembled the, the YAC planning committee. And then the YAC planning committee meets before we assemble the, the actual YAC. Um, so there are several tiers of planning that went into this space. And it's all the purpose of all these levels of planning was to ensure youth voice was incorporated into the design of every single experience uh, within the Youth Advisory Council. I'm pretty sure that that must have been a really like interesting learning experience, especially for um, those of you who it was like the first time seeing everyone, um, like Sarah mentioned, on like an equal level and not exactly like a clear leader or like a clear um, person directing everything the whole entire time. Um, so talking about like new learning experiences, I know that the whole process of the planning committee was virtual. So um, this can be directed towards Ambrose. Um, what do you think um, the uh, how do you think that meeting in person would have affected the end results in terms of team building? So I do think that that's not so clear just because we tried so hard to um, make sure that anything that would have been hindered by us being completely virtual, um, we, we built on like team building connections, communication. Uh, we did a lot of skill building, you know, rolling facilitation, a lot of meetings, um, a lot of communication, whether that be in our group chat, um, in emails, just, you know, making sure we're constantly communicating, that we constantly have a mutual understanding, um, that we know where everyone's at. We did a lot of uh, icebreakers. When I say a lot, I mean every single virtual meeting that we did, you know, we're trying to get to know each other more, um, what everyone's day to day is like, you know, just being friendly, um, you know, again, emphasis on connection. I do think that if we met in person, maybe this would have been a little easier just because everyone was so used to being in person all the time, especially with um, people being in school or students, like you were seeing people every day face to face. So it definitely would have been easier, but we tried our best to um, make sure that, you know, that we were still, you know, a community, even though we were virtual. I think it's really cool that you said like it wouldn't be it's not even that clear because the gaps that you kind of foresaw being an all virtual process you tried you all tried your best to fill it in um, by creating you know these icebreakers these constant um, team building activities albeit virtual so I think it's very obvious that um, it definitely paid off you guys seem to have a very great um, team chemistry. So um, that leads me to my next question. Um, this is definitely directed a little more um, towards Sarah. Um, 
what more did you learn from like your overall research um, other than like the hard facts and like scientific research aspect of it? What more did you like take away from it? Yeah, and so our research process wasn't necessarily like uh, statistical based. It was more anecdotal and based off of personal experiences. This is where a lot of talking to Erica from Mental New York and also we did some interviews with different um, youth organizers and um, people involved in the space. So just having these one-on-one -on -one chats, um, these interviews, asking them what they felt worked in their organization or could be done better in future organizations. What are some like unexpected challenges um, when, when it comes to doing these things? I think, um, from that mentor New York, we got a lot of, um, we got this document with the perspectives of different organizations throughout the United States. And that was a very valuable resource because they didn't just tell us how great or successful some of their initiatives were. We got a lot of um, kind of insight onto the negatives and what didn't work in terms of like, pay, um, things being online, being things being in person, maybe difficulties that come with that, difficulties that come with um, engagement online, maybe. Um, so that was a really useful tool um, that we looked into. Another thing was from one of our interviews, we got some insight from a previous climate organizer who was really active during the pandemic. And that was, um, it, it became very personal in the sense that it impacted our view on what wellness in the workplace really looked like. Uh, I related to their story a lot about um, climate anxiety and the thought of uh, if you didn't do the work you were doing every day, you know, online, these meetings, uh, organizing, uh, lobbying, all these different things that in terms of climate, it felt like it was a very serious topic and that the world was going to end if we didn't work. And so that led very easily to burnout. Um, and their advice to us was check-ins, like check in on your uh, peer, check in on your team member. Are they okay? Are you okay? Or do you have everything that you need? Um, and, and another thing I also have in common with the person we interviewed was we took our first year in college as a time to take a break and figure out ourselves and focus on this new experience of college um, rather than, you know, day in and day out, just climate change and, you know, getting people doing that type of work. So it was kind of a gear shift, but coming back into the workplace, how can we better prepare ourselves to do rigorous amounts of work or um, balance work and life. I think it's definitely really important to note um, that your research, I like how you mentioned it, like it was definitely more anecdotal than like, you know, statistical. Um, so in terms of like avoiding burnout and like having these check-ins in order to like avoid burnout, um, this question is directed uh, towards Isabel. Um, what recommendations would you make to other organizations wishing to launch a youth advisory council in terms of like, um, what advice would you guys give to them? Can you like uh, delve a little bit more about um, kind of like a guide that they should follow? Yeah, so I'll just say one thing to piggyback off of what Sarah was talking about just now. Um, around wellness in the workplace. I think as an educator and also a lot of my work in Solar One outside of the YAC pack involves um, job readiness programs. I train high school students on getting ready to enter the green job sector, working in climate and energy. And one of the biggest job skills that we work on instilling in every single program that we do is learning a work-life balance. Um, so this is kind of what Sarah is getting at with. When we speak to youth climate organizers, a lot of the times they push themselves so hard 
in high school, they get to college and beyond and feel like the world will crumble around them if they're not keeping up the same pace. Um, so work-life balance is just the most important thing I can emphasize as an adult facilitator in any youth space. So I definitely recommend that to um, other adult facilitators. And then uh, we're thinking about advice we would give people for forming youth advisory councils. Um, I've, I spoke on a panel that Mentor New York convened for other folks, other ad adults trying to convene these spaces. And there we spoke a lot about um, the, the actual naming and framing of the space. And sometimes I think people go back and forth between like youth board or youth advisory council or steering committee or something like this. And I really recommend staying away from language involving boards because um, a youth board is something really specific to this framework that nonprofits have. Um, and there's a whole legal precedent for how boards operate and lots of bureaucracy and, and systems in place there that I would never necessarily want to impose on youth organizers that I'm working with or bringing into a space I work in. Um, so just to say, I would avoid board related language when working with youth leadership um, in a nonprofit. And then the other thing is um, with the Youth Advisory Council Planning Committee, the, one of the most valuable tools I have from the time we spent together was this recommendations framework that they developed. Um, and within the framework, we kind of have like a step-by-step -step instruction manual, like I mentioned earlier. So we have like, I'm looking at it now, we have, they developed a questions list for check-in surveys to do with each team member. Um, they developed a list of member expectations and time frame for coming back to these expectations and reworking them. They developed an, an interview list for questions on uh, what to ask folks while we're recruiting youth advisory council members. They developed like social media posts and graphics and flyers. Um, they even wrote, this is like one of my favorite parts about this framework is they wrote a letter to the youth, the future youth advisory council um, from the youth advisory council planning committee just to like express uh you know the thoughts and feelings they were experiencing while they were planning this space for other youth and I just think it's really beautiful to have this language written by the youth that created this space for the future youth in this space um so a recommendation for an adult facilitator I'd have is to definitely try to get language written directly by youth who are involved in the planning that you can use to design the implementation. I think that it's really great how you guys definitely highlighted youth's voice like throughout the whole you know organization and for when the youth advisory council actually launches I have no doubt that it'll be like you know like saturated with just like the youth voice so I think that my personal biggest takeaway from this entire session was the fact that um, you guys um, encourage youth to take up space. I saw that in your presentation and I really like that wording because I feel like a lot of people are kind of afraid to, you know, take up that space like as they should as the youth in this world. So I think you guys did a really great job and um, I look forward to the eventual launching of the Youth Advisory Council. Thank you so much.